Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA for saying I regret having children, even though I love them. My wife and I are both 42 and we're deep into marriage counseling after our relationship basically fell apart once we had kids, twins, to be specific. Our life has been a whirlwind of problems and disagreements, and I'm trying to work through my resentment about having another baby that turned into twins, one of whom we suspect has ADHD and odd. Honestly, he's a handful. So, during one of our counseling sessions, the therapist asked me if I'd have kids if I could do it all over again. I said, honestly, no. I love my kids with all my heart and would do anything for them, but if I could rewind to when I was 24 and had just finished grad school, I wouldn't choose fatherhood. It's not the fulfilling experience people make it out to be. Sure, I love my kids, but the sacrifices in the life I've ended up living, working a job I hate just to support the family, while silently wishing things were different, aren't worth it to me, I had a much happier life before kids. Now, I'm just getting by day to day. My wife is furious. She took it the wrong way and even told our six-year-old, Daddy wishes you were never born. That is just beyond the pale. I am livid. You don't say that to a kid. Yes, I regret having kids, but that doesn't change how much I love them. I would never hurt them or intentionally upset them. What I said was in a marriage counseling session, a supposed safe space for discussing feelings. This has blown up into a huge fight. Our marriage is on the brink, and I'm worried she'll use this against me in court, trying to get sole custody and paint me as some kind of monster. She can't seem to grasp that you can love your kids and still feel that parenthood was not the right choice for you. I have three kids, not four. One is six, and the other two are four. When I talk about resenting having twins, I'm not blaming my wife. But having three kids is more than we planned for, and I've had to pick up a lot of overtime to manage, which I wouldn't have needed to if we just had two kids. That's part of what I resent, along with the challenges of dealing with our child who has ADHD and odd. This child is constantly defiant, throws tantrums, hits, kicks, and is just overall incredibly difficult. It's a non-stop struggle, and it's exhausting. I wouldn't choose to have him again if I could. Honestly, most people wouldn't. That doesn't mean I'm not committed to being a good dad and being there for my kids. I'm just saying that if I could hit rewind and redo my life, I wouldn't make the same choices. I regret a lot of things, including marrying my wife, which is why I phrased it that way. As for calling the ADHD slash ODD child a nightmare, you can look up what that means. It's incredibly hard to manage him. He's been kicked out of three daycares, and even my parents refuse to babysit. We never get a break, and it feels like no one can handle the situation. The fallout from that counseling session has been absolutely brutal. I never imagined that saying something so raw and honest in what's supposed to be a confidential and supportive environment would turn into a nightmare. I always thought that in therapy, you're allowed to voice your deepest regrets and struggles without them being weaponized against you. Apparently, I was wrong. My wife's reaction has been harsh, to say the least. She's using my words to attack my character and it's destroying me inside. To make matters worse, the kids are caught in the crossfire. My wife's outburst to our six-year-old was something I never thought she'd do. I get that she's hurt and angry, but telling her child something like that is beyond cruel. It's one thing to be upset with me, but involving our kids in this mess is something else entirely. It's like she's trying to punish me by dragging them into the fallout and it's breaking my heart. Right now I'm just trying to navigate this nightmare the best I can. I'm reaching out to friends and family for support trying to find a way to deal with the fallout and figure out how to move forward. I'm hoping that with time, my wife and I can find a way to communicate better and heal from this. But it feels like the damage might be too severe. AITA for finally snapping at my stepsister after years of body shaming? My stepsister 20F and I, 24M, have never seen eye to eye. Her mom and my dad got hitched when we were 6 and 10, so we've been in each other's lives for what feels like forever. But if you ask my stepmom, her daughter could walk on water, 
while I was always the one catching heat for anything that went wrong. My dad, total pushover, he'd roll over for whatever my stepmom wanted. When I was about 15, life started getting rough. My high school girlfriend dumped me to classic teen drama, my grades tanked, and I quit baseball. Stress eating became my go-to, and before I knew it, I shot up from 125 pounds to 162. That's when my stepsister decided she was cooler than me and started mocking me, fat ass, chubster, you name it. Every time I went to my stepmom about it, she brushed it off saying, she's just teasing, she's so much younger, why are you letting it get to you? I was pissed. I started locking myself in my room with a bag of chips, just trying to avoid her. By the time I was 22, I had ballooned up to 270 pounds, and I knew I was in trouble. I was way over the line and tipping into obesity. So I made a New Year's resolution to turn things around. I cut out junk food and hit the gym hard. Around the same time, my stepsister started packing on some pounds too, don't know why, but she put on over 30 pounds. But she didn't stop belittling me about my weight, even though at this point, I was finally lighter than her. By the end of the year, I had dropped 120 pounds. It felt incredible. And for the first time in forever, I felt like I had control over my life. At Christmas dinner, all the relatives were showering me with compliments, telling me how much better I looked. My stepsister? She just sat there, stewing. Every time someone praised me, she'd throw in a snide remark like, he's still pretty big, or well, he didn't lose that face roundness, or maybe he should work on that gut a little more. It was beyond frustrating, and I could feel the anger building up inside me. And then, she pushed me too far. After another one of her digs, look, you know you'll just put it all back on, why do you even bother, I snapped. I yelled, why can't you just be happy for me instead of tearing me down? Her response? Defensive much? That's when I lost it. Oh, I'm sorry, did I hurt your 200-pound feelings? I knew I should have stopped there, but I kept going. Calling me a fat tass, look at your plate, you've eaten half the table, fatty. She burst into tears and ran from the table. My stepmom went ballistic, screaming at me, saying just because I was insecure, I couldn't take it out on everyone else. I fired back, oh, so now you speak up, not a word from you in ten years while I got called fatty, lardass, and porker. But you're way older, she whined, like that was supposed to make it okay. I couldn't take it anymore, so I left the table and went home. When I woke up this morning, my phone was blowing up with messages from my stepmom, my dad, and my stepsister. They said I wasn't welcome at their house until I apologized. But you know what? I'm not going to. Thank you for listening to today's story. Have a nice day.